Beam&G drives force feedback can feel rather lacking. But talks with noise, I don't have a wheel. Sorry, this video is only for the sake of force feedback. Hello darkness, my old friend. To optimize your force feedback, you're going to need a CSV or LUT file generated for your wheel. What? Don't worry, in this video I'm going to show you how to make one of those, and you're going to need one because your wheelbase is not producing the forces that BeamNG is calling for, and a CSV file is going to fix that. Hopefully, making your experience on BeamNG that much better. So welcome to Talks with Noise, please share this video with other players because it's not very well known about, and let's get right into it. In my description, there's a link to a popular wheel checker which you will need to download, and you'll You'll have to make an account to download this file, but I just used a spoof account. Once downloaded, extract and run the program, because we're going to be using this to create our CSV file. Make sure your wheel is securely mounted and don't touch it, and then go to Spring Force, Step Log 2, and then the test will run. Your wheel is going to nod back and forth for quite a while until the test is complete. Once it's stopped, you can go to your documents folder and find a CSV file that it generated. Click on the CSV file and rename it to wheel.csv. Cut or copy the file and then find your beam g.drive folder. Go into the folder, go into settings, go into input maps, and then paste your wheel.csv file. And boom! boom! You just fixed your BeamNG force feedback settings! Wait, really? No. But we're almost there. Now all you need to do is boot up BeamNG and launch it with Vulkan if it gives you a higher frame rate. Then log into Gridmap V2 and pull up a K-series car, preferably a KC4 250. This car has very well-tuned suspension and it's very good for setting up your force feedback. Next, you're going to want to go into your UI apps and add the app FFB Graph as well as the app Steering Position. Drag and place these wherever you can visibly see them. You also want to make sure that you're running at at least 60 frames per second, which you can make sure you're doing so by going into options, graphics, and show FPS metrics. If your FPS is far behind 60, then your force feedback is going to feel very vague. And if that's the case, you need to dial back your graphics as much as you can. Once you have an acceptable frame rate, go into options, go to controls, click on force feedback, and go to axis. Now, this tip may sound ridiculous, but I'm going to state it because the mistake is very common. If your force feedback feels very bad, then try to invert your force feedback. There is a possibility that it's backwards. And similarly, you can click on inverted steering if your steering is backwards. Now, what the majority of you are finally waiting for. Go to smoothening and crank it up to 500, as we're going to adjust this here in a little bit. Then go to use response correction curve and click on the check mark. You will see a graph like this appear, which is based off of the CSV file that we had created earlier. Test your car and see how it feels. Also ramp up your speed to about 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers per hour and slowly turn your vehicle while you apply the brakes. If your force feedback is clipping, which you can see on the wheel over here, you need to dial back your strength. And if it looks like it's barely registering, you should crank up the strength. Something worthy of noting is that if you have a lower end wheel, such as a Logitech G29, it's perfectly fine to have your wheel clipping. If anything, it's actually preferable, just not too much. You will also have to constantly play around with your strength, depending on the type of driving and the type of terrain that you're handling. The strength feature is the thing that I'm constantly adjusting in BeamNG. Anyways, now let's focus on the smoothening, which you won't have to touch nearly as much. Lower your smoothening a little bit, then start driving and do slow wavy movements with your car. If everything feels okay, then begin to lower your smoothening until your wheel starts feeling very notchy. On this graph, you can see that my force feedback signal is very smooth, but as soon as I go down a little too much, it starts to look very ripply. So I'm going to bump up the smoothening a notch, and then it'll be good to go. As for the secondary smoothening, I wouldn't touch it because it seems like the automatic function is pretty accurate. By toying around with the secondary smoothening, it typically makes the notchiness a little bit worse. And besides that, we are pretty much done. If this video has helped you out, then please share it with others and let me know what you think. Did it solve your force feedback issues or are there still problems that you're running into? I'll pin my comment below with a bunch of solutions that you might be looking for. But anyways, thank you for watching this video and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, goodbye.